I see some people connecting now. That's real cool. So this is my first time doing live stream, so that's really exciting and also nervous at the same time. But let's do it. Alrighty, let's see how many people we have connected. Alrighty, 200, 300 people. That's, that's amazing. Thank you guys for coming. So I would like to give a little bit of my background and how everything came together. So now Trust Wallet is part of the Binance, which is super exciting to me. So uh, basically, um, I'm originally from Ukraine. I came to US about seven years ago, back in 2011. Since then, I've been working in security and then was working on different mobile apps um, to build for people. And so one of the things I did back in 2015, I solved the problem for truck drivers to build a simple app to find truck stops and then that kind of gave me an idea that now if you want to solve a problem you just build it for other people and you see the feedback so that was my basically first experience building companies in the past and then um, i got into crypto around three years ago back in 2014 when i got my first bitcoin and i thought that's pretty amazing and so since then i thought that crypto is going to uh, change finance and the freedom of finance and that's why I've been uh, developing and like dedicating my time to it and so um, I, today I would like to cover some of the basics on things that we do at Trust Wallet so I'm gonna talk about things that we're currently building so this is Wallet Core library release that we did about a week ago and we're gonna talk about lightning hardware wallet support ability to buy crypto easily in a mobile app so this is where we currently spend some time so feel free to ask any questions regarding these topics and then we're going to talk about uh, swap features for crypto wallets binance dex chain and desktop wallet so feel free to ask any of those questions and you know we'll see so binance and trust team have gathered some of the questions from across all the social media and telegram to answer for me so feel free to ask and you know we'll go from there so one of the questions here, okay. So the trust world was acquired by Binance, I assume in the same way that Google and Facebook acquired companies. Am I correct? Am I wrong? Please let me know. Which means that Binance controls and most of the part of the direction of the software development. So currently I think what kind of drives us is actually community. So whenever we see any problems that currently in crypto, we're just trying to solve that, right? So we're not um, kind of focused by like business model because our goal to make crypto accessible so that means we need to focus on the problem first and then we'll think about how can we monetize it in the future but that's not our current focus so our focus is just focus on things that people care as much so currently i see one of the problems is ability to access digital assets so imagine you want to access you know any of the crypto like cardano tezos bitcoin right you want to have one wallet for all the crypto just one in one place right and that's just the beginning so if you think five years from now you're not just going to have you know coins tokens but you're going to have like different type of assets so let's say you're playing games you would have different type of collectibles so that's standard called like erc721 or if you um you know doing some type of loans borrowing money from people and you'll have like different type of assets right inside your wallet and that's where we just want to focus on all right second question is from a Dolmatov. so um does it also mean that trust wallet team is paid by binance to continue working on trust wallet yes so we get all the resources from binance and the development and also you know doing marketing and doing lots of different things to just kind of keep us going and not to kind of be distracted with the financial situation and so that's one of the currently like challenges for many companies crypto is that like what kind of incentives you have to actually keep working on a product so we have all the resources and we just focus on execution righty second question uh, third question is how does trust wallet team or those from the same person al, al Dolmatov. so how does trust wallet team and those involved in development profit from trust apart from any resources binance provides so currently we don't think about like business model we just focus on development this is like our priority for the next you know at least couple of years Alrighty, someone is asking how do you decide which dApps get listed on the trust dapp store so 
Currently, market of dApps is pretty small, so we just expect people to submit the form with different information about their dApp. As long as it's not some type of pyramid, we would be happy to list and provide it to all the users to use it on our dApp store. And that's mainly done on Ethereum blockchain, so there's quite a few apps, and we just look through you know, the app, make sure it's working, make sure there is a benefit for people to use. So it's, it could be a game or it could be a utility uh, tool out there. All right. So this is a question from Titan V16. Will all coins currently supported by Trust Wallet be supported on Binance Dex when it goes live? So uh, the, the answer is not, just because the coins that are going to be uh, listed on Binance Dex will be available. So there is no way currently, un unless you pack the token or to specific currency, there is no way just to kind of move your Bitcoin into Binance Chain. So that's why the start would be just with the tokens that will be listed and created on Binance chain itself and then maybe a couple of years from now we can find a way for people to uh, connect different chains all together so imagine that maybe three years from now you would be able to actually deposit your bitcoin on binance dex and be able to uh, exchange it but the problem is also timing technology is not there it's just it's just a mess to connect different blockchains together so there is no standards for that so, so next question is how many projects are currently working with your wallet core library and when will those will be available for the users so it's been an amazing experience in the past like a week so once we released our main library which is called wallet core that allows any blockchain to add support and so companies from zilliqa tezos ontology decrete ion teta and many more already committing uh, code to our public repo and so that means that any blockchain company that's not supported yet on uh, trust wallet they would be able to just push code and automatically gets built into ios and um, and android apps uh, this is a good one how will trust wallet be different from any other wallet so one of the things I see currently in the market is that every wallet just focuses on one specific problem. So you would see many wallets just like focus on EOS, Tron, you know, Ethereum. But then like if you look at the experience of the users, they still want one solution for all the blockchains all in one place. Because it's it's a pain in the ass to, you know, create like so many different backup phases on different wallets and then, you know, just manage it like it's just too much. So that's why our like focus will be connect all the coins and blockchains all together in one wallet to make it just super easy for users to use it on mobile specifically. Because if you look a couple of years from now, like everyone will be on mobile and crypto. And if you want to allow payments, you know, you'll be going to the store, you will be able to scan QR code or just use NFC um, to just make a payment. So I think that's where the most use case will be done unless you're a professional trader where you would be using computers to actually access crypto. Um, next question, can we request new coin to be added? If so, what's the process? So as I mentioned, wallet core available for any company. So if you think you want to add a coin that's missing, you can just tell the company, uh, whoever runs the blockchain, just come to us and they'll be able to integrate all transparently on the open source on GitHub. Why do we need more wallets? I already have too many to log on. I think I already covered this question. So we're just trying to solve this problem at the moment and we'll see. Why doesn't Trust Wallet let me see private keys? I thought it's a decentralized wallet. So this question comes from a person, Oso Osomona. So one of the things we notice in crypto is that like our wallet allows you to create a backup phrase. So and backup phrase allows you to create billions of different private keys. And so some users struggle with this concept currently. And then there is even more users who actually think that you need to back up your private keys, but your backup phrase is your private key. And then what happens, they basically go and they just derive a private key for a specific blockchain. They save the private key, but they throw away uh, the backup phrase. So in that case, they just lose access to access to all the other coins that they already have on a wallet. So our goal, just simplify onboarding, just make sure like you store your backup phrase securely somewhere on the piece of paper, at the bank, anywhere that you think is safe to use it afterwards and recover. So that's why we don't want to lie to um, expert private keys. Your backup phrase is your basically the private key. All right, uh, when does XRP be added in the trust wallet? So, you know, I have happy news for you. It's already in beta. So if you go to trustwallet.com slash beta, you will be able to access XRP on your mobile phone already. And then there is way more coins coming in the next two weeks. All right, next question. What do you think about QPOS? Generally to elaborate if it's right direction for POS and if things 
that quantum computers could mean a big threat for crypto. Yeah, I personally don't think that, you know, we just need to wait for quantum computers to come first. It's still not a question uh, whether it's going to be a threat or not, just because, you know, when I was really young, I heard about the quantum computers is going to be taking over the whole world. But then 15 years later, nothing changed. So we just need to see technology first and then we'll see how that's going to imply other things in crypto. Maybe we need to build new technology or we need to convert to new ways to you know secure funds. But I think those are solvable. We just need to wait until it's going to come and we'll find a solution. So, you know, my rule usually is let's just focus on one thing at a time. If there is more problems coming, it will just solve at the time. So and I need to like think ahead 10 years from now. So what is the process for projects to contribute to Wallet Core and how to add it to a trust wallet? So I think I kind of responded to this question already. So go to the our um, GitHub page, which is github.com slash trust wallet, and you'll find Wallet Core to get started with. There is all the documentation and everything you need. Already, when ADA support, when desktop wallets? So good question. Um, ADA support, it depends on ADA developer just because we looked into their project, we couldn't find any good resources uh, in C++ and we thought that might be a little bit challenging for us to integrate because um, they have their code base in Haskell. So if they want to integrate, they're just happy to come and help us do it. Next question, when Tezos live? So we just recently got pull requests from the Tezos team. It's already been merged, so this means in about the next one or two weeks, it's going to be supported on Trust Wallet automatically. When debit card, when debit card, so we can spend profits. So it's a little bit challenging because Trust Wallet is a decentralized wallet. That means that we don't have any control over your funds, and there is no way to connect that into the debit card. Unless you're a centralized company, then it means that they can process your payments and charge your crypto from it, but not for So I think our focus would be still on the decentralized payments and just kind of focus on that specific use case. And there is lots of companies who have debit cards and allow you to make the payment. So I think we're just going to let them do it and we'll just focus on our use case to allow decentralized access to the crypto. Next question. If trust integrates natively with the Binance DAX, does it mean that we will still support other DAXs too? When does give Binance unfair advantage over other competitors? So same, I think same answer is that we don't want to be just specific to, to a company that's like, for example, Binance that is going to come out. So we don't want to just allow that. We just want to allow anyone to integrate any swap that you can possibly make. Because if you see that crypto is all spread out, so in order to exchange token on Ethereum, you need to use one provider. If you want to exchange something somewhere else, you would need to use different exchange. So this means that we just want to build a service that will allow users to find swaps that you want to exchange. And then we'll just give you the best rate based on where we find that. So imagine there's going to be like 10 other decentralized exchanges a couple of years from now. So this means that we can actually ask 10 other block, uh, blockchains to see what, what are the rates out there. And so they will just uh, find the best rate for you to swap it. So no limits and no constraints regarding like specific company or blockchain. I just want to like let that run to do it. Because if you look at the wallet space, you know, company usually um, kind of bias regarding specific technology and we're not like we start, we're trying to keep away from, you know, being biased specific technology, we just want to let and give freedom to other people. So that's really important. Um, next question, are you still looking for developers? Yeah, we do always. And you know, like most of our team members currently at Trust Wallet being um, hired after they being like contributing to the open source. So our goal is just, you know, find people who find it interesting to work on and we're happy to work together. You know, that's my mantra usually. You know, if you ha find people who have the same type of, you know, goals in life and, you know, they struggle with the same problems, it's just amazing to work together in that. Okay, next question. When will coin swap feature be ready and how will it work? So our goal in the next couple of weeks to bring this feature, just because I personally find it really difficult to swap some of the tokens that I have. So I, I was actually ordering some pizza and then I had ether, but I, I needed to basically swap Ethereum to Bitcoin. And then I needed to deposit Bitcoin into the lightning um, channel. So at that point, I was like, oh, I don't have any Bitcoins right now in this specific wallet, so I wanted to just swap it. So I thought, like, oh, let's just build it again. So I think um, based on like demand from people as well, we're just going to build this feature easily. And the way it's going to work, we'll try to 
build a service which look look up different providers who allow you to swap ether to bitcoin it will just implement that for anyone to do it so i think that's kind of our approach so i hope that will come in about like two three weeks we already like started working on it but it might take some time to do it how was the work experience changed since trust wallet got acquired by binance so i think now we have way more resources so this means we can hire a little bit uh, more people in the team so this will allow us to move faster and solve problems because before we joined we had basically like two and a half people working on the product and that was a challenging part because you know you only have limited resources and there is like so many things that you need to cover in order to actually make it happen All right next question what interests do you have except for programming and cryptocurrencies? Oh yeah, I mean, I spend most of my time doing like development and crypto for the most part. I think that's my kind of like uh, philosophy right now. But before that, I was into ping pong since seven to 14. I spent, you know, my time playing ping, ping pong and it was the best in my state for a couple of years. But then I got injured by doing parkour and I just stopped doing it. Uh, since then, the lifestyle a little bit changed, so I spend my time playing tennis every Sunday and then do runs once in a while and also a big fan of hikes. So that's basically I spend my time outdoor. When and how did you get into crypto space? This question comes from Michael and his username on uh, Twitter is like Crypto's Batman. He's pretty popular and he follows like Binance and Trust Wallet pretty heavily. So really big supporter. So um, I think the first um, time I heard about Bitcoin back in 2014 when there was a huge, you know, um, there's lots of people just coming to crypto and so my friends told me about it. At that point we thought like, oh, it's a good time to buy Bitcoin. So we just went to the Coinbase, got some crypto and then next day everything just crashed. I think um, China banned Bitcoin and so that's basically day before I acquired my crypto. Those pretty fun times. And since then, um, I think I didn't follow as much crypto until um, probably 2017, uh, that's when I learned that I actually had some Ether um, bought on Bitcoin like really early on. And so I basically thought like, oh, how do you spend it now? And there was a big money about, you know, ICOs. And so I thought, all right, I'm going to participate in the ICO. And then what I realized, there was only a few projects out there. One of them is like My Ether Wallet. They provided it provided the ability to store ERC-20 tokens. But I thought like, oh, I wanted to do it on mobile and I just switched you know, into like mobile development and thought like, oh, let's just build a wallet for ERC-20 tokens that will be automatically showed to you because that that was something missing because most of the wallets wouldn't show you tokens. So you would just go and edit manually. So I thought like, oh, that's a good problem to solve. So I just did it on mobile, sent it to my friends and then everything just started to take off because like people started to refer to other people to use the wallet on mobile. And since then, like lots of things changed. We added more coin supports and, you know, and it will be adding even more. Um, let's see, next question. What are their three favorite blockchain projects out there right now? Can be anything blockchain related. Um, I don't think I have personally any blockchain that I think is good. I think like most of the blockchains actually have really poor in execution for the most part, just because um, all the teams trying to be like fully decentralized and you know, they, they make everything really inefficient. You know, what I see right now, like every company who would love to build any feature, you know, it takes them like a year just to like uh, draft a spec, you know, do something right. And at the same time, like this is like too slow. You need to like first focus on the use case you want to solve, you know, scalability or, you know, the speed, like whatever you want. And then like try to execute on that and make it available for anyone. So I think lots of companies still fail to deliver really good experience for developers in terms of documentation, tooling. And so... But in personal, I think um, Layer 2 solution looks really promising to me. I've been following them for quite a bit, so I'll get to that a little bit later. What do you personally think about Buterin's suggestion wallet-free structure? Um, I think it's a good incentive, personally. Um, the question is if that's gonna work. So if you think about crypto, right, there is like many players in the space. So one of them are miners. So they are incentivized to secure the network if they get paid. And then, you know, the price of the, you know, the coin is enough for them to actually survive because currently it's all run by proof of work. And that's a big challenge for most of the company. So um, there's also players like uh, wallets. Currently wallets don't make any money and it's a really big problem for them to, you know, stay sustainable. If you have a team of 10 developers, that's going to be challenging for you unless you have really um, great ideas how to monetize.
monetize, but that's not being solved yet. And so I think it personally, it's a good way to incentivize. So I think that should be done by the protocol where you can actually specify information on where the funds go to, like which developer. But it's something that needs to be tested. It's all about testing in crypto. No one really knows. But at the same time, you need to build incentives for different uh, dev developers so they can earn crypto as well. So because you're going to be interacting with different um, smart contracts, so you want to make sure that those people who build those apps also incentivized. So I think that is supposed to happen on different levels. Okay, next question. I see you have a CASA node. How do you like it? When can we expect Lightning integration with Trust Wallet? So this question comes from a hodler Tashi. So actually very soon, um, I had a bet with somebody, uh, so I need to deliver this now. So I think it's gonna come before um, summer is over. So I would say about four months away. And the way we're gonna approach this problem in the same way, we just wanna make you know a standard a protocol for anyone to add any type of solution. So if you look at Bitcoin, they have Lightning uh, solution and all the um, companies work out of the same protocol so that means that if you build different providers they work with each other but if you look at blockchains like ethereum they only have um, i think they have about like five different companies working on state channels but all those companies they kind of stay away from each other and they're just building their own uh, specs and then protocols for themselves so that means that all those state channels won't be able to communicate between each other and that's a big problem because you want to make something that will be accessible for everyone and you know my goal in crypto is to bring all the developers and make it accessible for regular people to use crypto all right i think this is most of the questions that being covered and i wonder if we can get more questions from the public as well all right let's see Oh, feel free to ask any questions, happy to answer them. Um, second, this. Uh, what's your nationality? Um, I'm originally from Ukraine and I moved to US about seven years ago when I was 20. How is Cardano? Cardano is coming probably a couple of months away. It depends on the, on the team, if they're gonna integrate it quicker. Yeah, ask me anything, any hard question, happy to answer. What security feature will wallet include? So when you think about security on mobile, I think the main part of the of it is actually your phone. It's actually one of the securest things out there because your phone is encrypted by itself because they use encryption. And so your pin code on the phone um, encrypts all the data stored on your phone. So I think there is different use cases between mobile wallets and also harder wallets. And so if you want to store like millions, I would you would prefer to use hardware wallet just because operation system designed just for that specific use case. And then mobile wallets would be more used for things like, um, because mobile wallet is considered to be a hot wallet, that means you don't want to store too much money. And then it will be used for payments, you know, just doing some trades and play games and other things. So another question, can you try to insure mobile wallet with FDIC? I don't think that's possible regarding uh, decentralized wallets just because, you know, user is the only one who has custody over funds. And so I don't think you can potentially um, kind of insure it just because, you know, the insurance company won't be able to have access to that if something happens. So you just want to make sure um, that's safe. All right. Basic version of basic hardware wallets. So actually there is a development happening on the hardware wallet side. So there is a few companies who are launching Bluetooth connection to their hardware wallet. So this means that we're going to allow you to connect to your ledger trouser if they have ability to uh, have Bluetooth. So it will be way easier for people to just connect it to your hardware wallet and sign transactions. When moon, <laughs> not sure. All right, let's see. Can I see you FDIC for my crypto assets? I don't think that's possible. Yeah, there is some spammers <laughs> mentioning about some crypto tokens.
Yeah, will Trustworld insure crypto assets? Do you think anyone ever would? Um, challenging question, just because, you know, if you don't have custody of your wallet, um, or you do, um, it's a little bit challenging to, to do it this way. But I think there's companies who are doing something similar where they give money to a specific providers and those providers would do multi-signature wallets. This means that actually they can protect funds easily. But because if you use your backup phrase, you know, whenever someone finds out about backup phrase or you give it to them, they will be able to access your funds. So this means you're not able to make it um, so you can protect it from other people. Nice hoodie, thank you. Yeah, I think there is a chance to win 10 of the hoodies. I have two of them, so I usually wear them when I go to the coffee shop. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think regarding Doge, someone mentioned, I think it's a good way for people to bring, um, you know, just regular users. Because, you know, crypto should be fun. see Alrighty, more questions more challenging questions uh, do you think I can store 1 million in trust vault or should I use Trezor instead I think it's up to you um, you know trust vault is considered to be a hot wallet you can store by the same time like as long as you keep your backup secure you should be fine but ideally you want to make your funds not easily accessible whenever you talk about like big, large sums, right? So imagine this, you will be walking with a hard wallet on the street. Someone will just come up to you and say like, oh, just give me that. So that means you want to be secure. Make sure it's like super hard to actually get your money out of your wallet. So for large sums, use hardware wallets for smaller things and, you know, day-to-day um, -day operations, use a trust wallet. What is the best thing you like about Binance Dex? So I think... The main focus about the Binance DAX is allow anyone to easily trade it. So if you look at the market right now, like decentralized exchanges are really slow and efficient. You know, even like Xerox protocol, it's amazing technology, but it's not available on Ethereum just because it's slow. So the goal for Binance DAX would be to make something like super fast, secure, at the same time, it provides really good usability for end users to come in. How do wallets bother me? Even their constant security update seems unsecure. Yeah, that's true. I think most of the block, uh, most of the harder wallets, they try to, you know, secure their wallets as much as they can. But it's always challenging because there is a new vectors of attack, so they try to make it, you know, inaccessible for hackers to get in. Do you think major finance institution will switch to crypto in the near term? I think it depends on adoption. Um, it depends how many people will be coming to crypto. Um, you know, it's all about inefficiencies in business. So imagine, you know, banks, they would love to switch to crypto just because they could cut down inefficiencies because in order to send money from one country to another, you would need to use so many different banks on, as intermediary. Imagine they would just build a, their own private network, which allows you to secure funds much easier. So I think if they can find that easily accessible for them, they will do it just because it's going to cut down their cost. XRP the standard. I think there is, you know, um, access for anyone to use and you have all the freedom to use whenever asset you like. Is Binance DAX permissions net? So it's going to start with, um, you know, Binance as running notes, but then it will switch maybe a year or two from now where anyone would be able to come in and run their own notes. But I think we're going to start with something simpler first. How many cryptos will be on the Binance DAX? Uh, when we launch, I think it's going to be about like 10 or 20 assets, something really simple. So you can just easily start playing with it. Um, but you know, it's up to the community. If there's going to be more projects coming and getting listed on Binance Dex, they will be all available. When will you see more coins in Trust Wallet? So the next two, three months, I think we're going to cover top 30 coins and then anyone could just add it easily. Can you explain ADA? Um, I cannot explain. I don't know much knowledge about it. You know, there is a team who is working on it. I haven't seen much progress regarding, you know, something out there in terms of, you know, adoption. 
where can we use the wallet or is that based on what coins you're accessing? I mean, you can use wallet anywhere. It's accept accessible on App Store and Google Play. So this means anyone could be just using. Uh, do crypto have to be moved over the Binance chain to be on Binance DEX? Yes, you have to have your own token on Binance DEX in order to use it. So there is no way just to kind of connect the Bitcoin into a Binance DAX, but it's coming. I think there's ways to build bridges, but technology itself not there yet from, yeah, it will take some time. Yeah, someone is asking, why am I ignoring you? Yeah, I think I just see many questions and just trying to pick one. So feel free to ask again and I'll try to answer that. Will Trust Wallet be able to ensure cryptocurrency? That is the wallet template. Again, um, I think that's not possible just technologically to ensure, you know, the wallet. But, you know, you can ensure by, you know, storing your funds securely, your backup phrase. Any plans to add multi-layer authentication or multi-user authentication if storing big funds? Um, challenging question. Um, there is ways in terms of technology to do it uh, on decentralized space. So there's something that's called um, smart contracts based wallets. So this means you can create a smart contract and you can uh, delegate few of the users uh, to sign transactions. So let's say you wanna store like a billion dollars on a smart contract, but you wanna make sure that you would need to get at least three signatures in order to send a few transactions, right? Because you don't want one person to be able to get access, um, to get hold of the um, uh, funds. So what could be done is you can actually add like multiple wallets like your wife, your friends or someone else who you trust and then whoever is going to deposit the money in order to withdraw them you would need to ask those three people to sign transaction. So as long as they get approval from all of them that's when you can withdraw. So I think that's one of the best things you could do in decentralized manner on blockchain and you don't need to have any third parties to be doing it because it's all done on the smart contract itself. Um, will trust wallets send push notifications when a serious security flaw is found? You know, I think, you know, the way we focus on it, like we do our own security audits in, in terms of the code. And, you know, the most important part about um, decentralized wallet is that you in control of your funds. So as long as you keep your backup phrase secure, you should be fine. Right. Um, you should try to address all the questions, not pick and choose. Um, it's a little bit harder to uh, see them, all of them. We'll audit your code. So we have internal teams auditing the code, but at the same time, our code is open source. Anyone can actually see it. And, you know, feel free to join GitHub to see anything you like. Yeah, at the same time, we uh, hire um, third party companies to come in and audit our code to make sure, you know, like, you know, they have another set of eyes to look at. Let's see. Someone is asking, I don't use wallet daily to get the up, up updates. Yeah, I think you, you should always get updates from like different companies because they always do some security updates and something useful in terms of features, new coins. Um, are the listing requirements same on DEX as the regular Binance? I think that's not defined yet, but I think there will be some limitation on what can list on Binance DEX. How will you able to achieve ATH to BTC swap? So at the moment, we're going to use third party providers that will allow you to do swaps. Um, you know, company like Changely or you know, Shapeshift, which is going to allow you to connect to them easily from your mobile phone to make all the swaps. How many projects uh, total do you think will move over to Binance DEX um, to Binance chain? So I think, you know, you know, any company could just move in. So it's up to them if they want to use, you know, a fast and secure network. Because currently most of the blockchains are really limited in terms of the speed and what you could do with it. How does working for Binance feels like? Seems Binance works super hard. I mean, it is hard and, you know, it's not that, you know, I'm kind of forced to work. It's just something that I enjoy. And if you enjoy something that works for you, you will be just doing that like 24 seven. So I think that's a goal for us as well. Like, Everyone in the team, they're really focused on, you know, like adoption crypto in the world. And then as everyone should. Do you recommend Binance Exchange or Trust Wallet to keep the coins? I think it depends what's your use case. If you want to swap tokens, I think easier to use the Binance. But then if you want to just store coins, it's ideal for the trust to store it because you have full control over your funds. 
how does Binance DEX fee work? Um, I think the fees are going to be like super small in terms of those swaps and the miners is going to be the people who will be like charging small fee for every transaction, but it's going to be like pennies. Do you find, um, let's see. Do you find XRP project to be sufficiently decentralized and easy to work with? I could tell you for sure that XRP was pretty impressive for us in terms of documentation and good tooling to add integration. But other than that, I don't have much knowledge regarding their, you know, uh, chain in terms of like how decentralized it is. What kind of performance does the DEX allow you under? What type of constraints? Transaction load versus TPS. So because Binance DAX is a fork of Cosmos ASDK, it's gonna allow you to do many transactions a second. So you can complete transactions within, like finality of transactions within one second. Um, regarding transaction, I think it would be similar to what centralized Binance could uh, currently uh, handle, which is enough for now. Like that's a pretty good improvement so far, like comparing to other blockchains or decentralized exchanges. Does TrustWallet send any other outgoing requests for user metrics? Um, I don't really know what that question means, but what I can tell you for sure is that we do pretty much everything to make sure we keep privacy of the users as much as we can. So we don't have any internal analytics regarding like how you use your wallet. Um, we don't track any of that. Like we really want to focus on privacy. We want to make sure people secure. And so that's how we kind of reduce the, you know, security factors of attack because, you know, you could be having like some vulnerabilities in terms of like using different plugins. So we try to remove all the plugins, make sure the wallet is still really lightweight. It doesn't have many dependencies and it's like audited. One second allow you to do propagation of blocks around the world. Yes, that's how the tender mean consensus, consensus was designed to allow you to do propagation within like a couple of seconds. And, you know, it's been working great and, you know, it's not possible you have like millions of nodes, but you have smaller amounts, it's possible. Will Binance every, will Binance every launch is DEX that is ERC20 compatible? Um, it won't be um, on the launch, but any ERC20 compatible token would be able to move to the Binance DEX. Can Binance open an exchange in Santiago, Chile? No idea about that. But you can use Binance pretty much from any country. Where do you work most of your time? So um, it's kind of interesting. So whenever I wake up, I usually go to the coffee shop just to kind of wake up and get some coffee. So that usually happens between like 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. to like 1 p.m. So I would just spend a few hours at the coffee shop getting some coffee, waking up. And then I will just go home and work. So our team is like fully distributed. So we don't have, you know, someone in a specific location. But I'm based in Mountain View, so it's Silicon Valley next to Google. Um, a wallet in exchange is probably the worst idea ever, just the Coinbase, it's wrong. I think, you know, if you think about wallets, you know, the most important part is that you can store funds, but at the same time, most of the time you would like to swap tokens between like different use cases. So if you want to, you know, imagine you want to uh, buy some pizza on Lightning Network, but at the same time, you only have Ether. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to like send it to centralized exchange, do the swaps. Like, that's lots of steps to make it happen. So that's why I want to make it uh, easier for the users to just swap it internally in the mobile app and just use it easily. Is Trust Wallet a full note? If not, how much less secure will it be? So the way we designed Trust Wallet is not to be a full note just because it's not possible to make it happen on um, mobile so the way some companies are approaching they're building spv clients where you can build you know you can uh, verify the chain itself locally but it's going to require you to do lots of um, network so that means that in order to sync your wallet it could take like two hours to do the sync and that's only for one coin but imagine you live somewhere where internet is not really accessible so this means that there is no way for you to do sync with a full node so the way we designed interaction with the blockchain is that you can talk to any node directly. So we're going to expose a functionality soon where you can pick your own node to interact with. And that's going to be really useful. Like when Lightning is going to come, so you can actually say like, I want to connect to my own node and I will do uh, most of the connection there. So I think that's going to be available pretty soon. 
I hope to master BNB. I mean, you can XRP. Yeah, now it's available. So. Will holding BNB give you discount on fees on the Binance Dex? Um, actually, they don't know as much yet, so I don't know about the fees, but I think it's going to be like pretty cheap to do transactions on Binance Chain itself. Let's see. Uh, I think you're mentioning about like men in the middle attack whenever you access the node. Yes, you can, but at the same time, there is technologies like SSL pinning that allows you to make it happen. But the way all the nodes are designed is that you never share your private key ever. So this means that you, like whenever you send a transaction, you do signing locally. And so you don't need to interact with a node in order to actually sign something. So that means, you know, I don't see any potential problems with that because, you know, when you enter an address where you want to send it, you're going to be sign signing that address. It doesn't get exposed to other services. So I think that's pretty good. And most of the walls work this way. They just connect to the line, light node and you just get information about the blockchain. So how would you comment on increased number of transactions on Bitcoin? Looks like we hit the max. Honestly, I know. I think um, currently the, the fees on Bitcoin just rise a bit. And I heard some people complaining about it. But at the same time, there is a number of transactions that Bitcoin could process. It could be either like five or so in a minute or like second. So, I mean, it is a max and I don't think Bitcoin will be a good solution for payments in the future. I think it's a good, secure way for, you know, storing your funds um, in terms of like a storage of value, but it's not going to be a payment method. So that's why like solutions layer two will be really useful for people to use. Um, do you have any plans for inheritance of crypto in the trust wallet? Uh, we don't, but I think there is ways to make it happen uh, with smart contracts. Um, I think that's possible. Basically, what you say, you can give uh, permission for a smart contract to make specific um, commands whenever someone didn't use their wallet for like a couple of years. And so this means that someone who you give permission would be able to claim your funds maybe like two years after you being inactive. So that's one of the kind of like smart contracts you could program. And probably the best thing about crypto, you can make programmable, programmable money. So you can actually say, I want to send this amount of money to this person like three years from now. So anything could be done on a smart contract systems. Do you have, okay, any news from Digibytes? No idea. Yeah, someone saying about EXRN token. I have no idea what it is. Yeah, will Zill be in the wallet soon? Yes, it will be. Zill, uh, Zillica already working on the integration. So I assume once they're done, it should be available within a couple of weeks. I heard Binance will charge 100k listing fee for Binance DEX. Will that be paid in BNB? Yeah, I think so. SPV headers being bad, I mean, with MITM tech. I mean, yes, but at the same time, like, the chances that someone will be, like, will be utilizing men in the middle is pretty low. So, yeah, I don't think that's a big problem currently in the, in the crypto. But at the same time, if you think about it, right, you use Google Chrome on your computer and there is no, um, you know, uh, SSL pinning. So this means, like, you're transiting all, all the data for credit cards all online and anyone could have that access. Yes, Silica will be available. Is Binance Launchpad regulated by server? I have no idea. How much crypto adoption have you seen in the past years? I mean, adoption other than trading. Um, I think it's a good question. You know, what I realized is that most people just huddle, but you should not huddle. You should utilize crypto. And that's up to us how we're going to utilize it. I personally was getting pizza three weeks ago from, you know, uh, Domino's. I just ordered via Lightning Network. That was a pretty amazing experience. So you should do too. You should learn about different technology. You should utilize. You should try to play different games like CryptoKitties or utilize different apps that allows you to give loans to other people, borrow and make earn, like earn interest. You know, one of the things I used recently was called Compound. It's on Ethereum Network. You can just take your money and then you will earn interest for about like few percent a year. And it's all done on smart contracts. So in that sense, it's secure. When Lightning Network will be on trust? I uh, already have a node, so I'm being playing around with it. So hopefully before summer ends, so pretty soon. 
Any concerns about Ledger Nano S or X technology? Um, good question, because like some people complain a lot about uh, Ledger Nano introducing Bluetooth. I think it's a good way to kind of make user experience easier to connect to different devices. You know, there's some um, chances that like um, Bluetooth could be hacked, but at the same time, um, it's always off by default. So this means that in order to actually make it happen, you need to be available in some public space and then, you know, kind of expose everything. And there's like different um, methods to validate security. So we'll ask you for different questions, not questions like different things to confirm. So that's pretty good in terms of security. But I'm not an expert to, uh, to answer that. Follow the share project. When will BNB be added to Trust Wallet? So we support the ERC20 token on BNB and already posted a video on my Twitter um, to see how fast this Binance chain is. So you should check it out. It's pretty instant to make transactions, it's pretty nice. But it's gonna be available for anyone to use uh, itself when Binance DEX or in Binance chain will go out. What do you think about AML Bitcoin? Um, you, I mean, I think Bitcoin is a good way to introduce crypto to anyone, but I'm not sure about the a AML. What does what does your service provide? What if you rather leave my crypto on Binance? I think there is use cases for different things. Like if you do like trade, you know, Binance is the best way to do it. If you want to just store your phone securely, you just store it on your mobile phone or in your hardware wallet. So if you want to send some crypto to your friends, you rather have Trust Wallet installed so you can just make it easier to send crypto. And that's how everyone should be doing. Like you need to introduce crypto to other people. You need to teach them about different benefits on how it works and like what it gives you. What it gives is like gives you the freedom to actually do whatever you like. And so that's what we're trying to accomplish as well. We're just gonna give different options to use different things. Um, Binance Chain is running Testnet. Anyone can join. Yes, so Binance DAX is available for anyone to use. It's on Test Network, and then soon it's gonna be on mainnet. Uh, does Binance DAX require KYC? Not yet, or ever, I don't think it will be done. Is there any potential use case if Trust Wallet has its own cryptocurrency? I don't think we need to have our own cryptocurrency itself unless it's going to be some utility token for anyone to, you know, do something useful with a product. But, you know, I had some ideas. Imagine like every wallet will have, you know, their own specific tokens to, um, you know, install some themes. Imagine you want to, you know, have some dark mode on your phone. What if you just, you know, get some um, ERC tw ERC721 token as a collectible and automatically activates to be dark mode or something fun. Like ideally you could build some utility around that. You can make it fun for people to not just kind of utilize crypto, but also use it for real use cases. Okay, please pick a date when this hits the market. We'll sell a trend. Yeah, um, not sure. Cannot pick any dates. You know, like we're focused solely on like development, and we really think that you know, crypto market depends on many other things. Like economy itself is like pretty complicated because. There are so many different players incentivized in different things, right? So you have miners, you have institutions, you have regular people who are buying, selling crypto. So it's kind of hard to pick. Um, I think like the goal would be to focus, you know, finding utilities and, and solving problems for real world. How many cryptos are moving to Binance chain to start? Does Binance chain have gas fees? Yes, there is gas fee. So every transaction will require you to pay some BNB fees. And I think being, um, the fees could be paid in different tokens as well. So it's gonna be pretty small, so you will be able to access it easily. Do you have any speculation on BTC price? You know, market will show, like it all depends on the market, like where the market goes up or down. So if there is a big demand, it just goes up. It's pretty basic economy rules. Um, how do you go about requesting partnerships with other developers? I see you working with, see you working well with EEXR. No, we don't work with this specific token, but we're really open to developers. So we provide all the tools to build different, you know, decentralized applications. We allow them to integrate any coins, and we're happy to share any experience we'll learn from building crypto um, product. How many crypto kitties you own for yourself? Um, I think I have about seven. So I have like few gen zeros and then I breeded them. So I, I was playing fun with them. So it's kind of fun experience to do it. 
So, and I highly recommend for anyone to learn it, especially if you have kids or someone like young generation, they would love that. Explain your company briefly and what it does. Um, I think it's, you know, this time I was talking about Trust Wallet. It's a decentralized wallet that allows you to store crypto easily on mobile and send it to any of your friends. Where do you see a crypto market in five years? Will GPM and na national coins win for BTC ever? Um, I think every coin will have their own use cases, even, you know, like um, GMP, GMP coin will have its own use case. And so, you know, there's gonna be millions of different tokens in our wallet. So everyone will be uh, utilized for a specific thing. So I think there's a good future for it. Speak slowly, I'll try. There is like 10, 15 different Binance engines on Telegram scammers. Can you do something about it? Um, we see this problem currently on Telegram where someone joins the group and then there's tons of scammers trying to reach out to that person. And I don't think that's something we can uh, tackle. Currently, there is no way for us to control. And we just basically hope Telegram will have some features to secure their own uh, network. What is the TPS of the Binance chain? Um, not sure about specific number, but it's pretty fast. It's way faster, way faster than many of the blockchains. What do you think about Blue Wallet? I personally use Blue Wallet and I think it's a great team. I personally know the Igor who is working on uh, Blue Wallet. It's a good example of how um, Lightning could work. And at the same time, it's open source. so Anyone could run a node and uh, just be connected to it. Where do you see a company such as Tron within the next five years in relation to your company? I mean, we support Tron on uh, Trust Wallet, so anyone could just easily store tokens, but it's all depends on, you know, how can you build community? So if you think about blockchains, it's all about building a community of developers who can build really amazing products and deliver it to the end user. So if there are gonna be more developers, that means there's gonna be more products built on top of it, and then they will utilize the technology itself. So you just need to put lots of efforts into, you know, bringing more people, making your product available for anyone to use. Make sure you have really good documentation, you, tools to test and build things on top of it. The future of cryptocurrency will be able to adopt think you know people already adapting it and using it you know if you think about United States then you know one dollar always equal to one dollar so it's not being ever an issue but if you go to countries like Ukraine where you know the currency just fluctuates so much and then that's a big problem and then if you go to Venezuela Brazil you know they have problems with currencies and it's been controlled by government so much so I think that's where that option usually will happen from those countries and then the US will be mostly focused on investments for the next couple of years can I add my coin to a trust wallet where on Binance is just a simple PR to your, pool, um, to your GitHub? So if it's ERC20 token, you would be able to add your own uh, token image. It's available on our GitHub. And then if it's some specific blockchain, you would be able to do that too. But it will take you a couple of days just to do integration and then set up all the nodes. Do you have any news about XRP and Binance? I have news for XRP and trust wallet. It's been added in the beta, so you can already use it. All right, that was amazing to see questions from everyone. I think we're going to wrap up and, you know, see you guys next time. All right, hold on. I see a few more questions that they really like. All right, hold on. Do you think it's, it's more important how the market and adoption, great tech or great UX? I personally think at the moment what we've seen so far is that great user experience that's what's available to the user because if you're building a technology that's you know it's slower it's less intuitive to use like paypal that's it's not really good for people to use it so we just need to focus on how we can bring technology itself not as a secure element but also how easy to use so that's where we're trying to put our focus that's why we try to make our user interface like as simple as possible to the end user to understand is there any need for layer two technology for Binance chain? 
Um, I think it is possible because when you think about blockchains that not every transaction should be secured in the main chain, you would be able to just kind of utilize layer two solution to make way more transactions if you need it and then commit uh, specific states. So I think this could be utilized for any blockchains because you don't want to have one blockchain that gather all the data that you didn't really need unless there is ways to do sharding to make it, you know, kind of split into small pieces. Electrum MX based backend. No, we're using um, a tool called Blockbook. It's based by Trezor and allows you to make it easy to communicate and get like different change addresses. But it's really similar. You can take a look at open source Blockbook. How will swap BNB from ERC20 to Binance Chain will happen? Must they send to Binance? Yes, uh, you would need to send it to the exchange to do the swap just because. Um, it's totally new blockchain. There is no way to import your private key into um, Binance uh, chain and claim the tokens. So you would need to do that through the exchanges itself. When EOS, I think EOS team could just come in and integrate it. It's up to them. Can I use store BNB and trust wallet and automatically swap? No, you would need to send it to the exchange. And that implies for the most coins that uh, not ethereum based for example so you would need to just swap it on the exchange and then send it back bring tech to people not people to tech i think it could be done easily in both right you know we started using mobile phones just because it was super easy and fun to play with how far off is interoperability between tokens so an app like yours can pick the best coin for the transaction um I think interoperability in general in crypto is like pretty bad just because every company just focus on, on their own use cases. What I noticed as well is, you know, there's no interoperability between different wallets. Imagine you wanted to send a request to your friend, but on decentralized wallet, it's just not possible. And I'm looking into like different companies who are solving this specific problem. So hope we can adapt that as soon as it's gonna come out. Do you hire UX or designers currently? So currently we have one designers, but you know, I'm happy to always talk. And if you have great ideas, we're happy to integrate it and you know, discuss that. Just message me on Twitter. My DMs are always open for anyone. Dope hoodie, thank you. Alrighty, thank you guys for you know, all the questions and you know, happy to talk next time.